The Duggar family, they um, are made famous by a reality TV program that they uh, are on called 19 Kids and Counting. Started out, I believe, 14 and pregnant again. That's when I encountered Michelle Duggar. I saw her on television and I was just in awe. I thought, here's a woman who is actually doing it. She's got all these kids. She's got, you know, the organization and the, just the way that her children were presented on camera. They were so respectful. They were so obedient. They were so, um, you know, just the epitome of what we were striving for in our home, which was not working out nearly so well. I'm, you know, glad that nobody brought a camera in <laughs> to see what was going on there. We were trying, we tried really hard, but it was just way too much to keep up with. You know, there's no reality involved in there. It's just a big head trip in which everybody is trying to fit into these roles and you have to really, you know, um, do some pretty, pretty convoluted mental gymnastics to be able to follow those biblical gender roles in today's society. And uh, so it, it ends up everybody is just miserable. Everybody is so fake because you can't be who you are. Forget about your, you know, capitalizing on your strengths, minimizing weaknesses. You basically just have to fit into that box. And it's, it's very confining, it's very restrictive. And the only way to keep it up is to keep up the delusion that's making you believe that this is actually, you know, God's will. Well, what happened is um, In Touch Weekly magazine released a, a police report that showed that in 2002-2003, their oldest son, Josh Duggar, uh, molested five girls over a, a course of a couple of years. And so when that information came out in public, and it's kind of been floating around rumors of that on the internet, um, for as long as they have been in the public eye, but now that it's come out, full-blown story, and uh, it's been, you know, just crazy. You, you go to the news feeds and that's all you hear about. They handled it biblically because Within that fundamentalist mindset, you know, there's this belief that there are channels of authority that God works through. And right at the very top under God is the family. The family is ultimate. And of course, the husband, the father is the ultimate authority within that system. So they would try to handle this as a sin issue, as a character issue. And, you know, they did all of that. The next step, the Bible says, is you would go to the elders of the church, which he also did. Uh, Jim Bob took his son to the elders. And even then, you know, it was not a matter of contacting authorities because it's still a, a sin issue. It's something that needs to be dealt with spiritually rather than legally or psychologically or any of that. Within the Christian homeschooling, and, and I have to qualify that and say fundamentalist Christian homeschooling, there is like a stark terror of CPS, Child Protective Services. And uh, so, you know, they believe that social workers just want to steal your children, take them away and put them, you know, in an ungodly environment. And so they would not have wanted to have that involvement in their home. When you, you, you go down that path and you have all of these children and you just take a look and say, how are they doing? You know, how's it working out for you? And uh, that has been the thing that I find with No Longer Quivering, that the women who come and they start reading, their main concern is, you know, my kids, I'm doing this for my kids and it's not helping them, it's actually hurting them. And that's the motivation that they have. The same thing that got them into it is what's going to get them out of it.